Hello everybody, my name is Joshua and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Coffee, Cats and King where we will discuss books, both new and old I will share with you pictures of my cats who will make you wish they were your cats and I will drink enough coffee for me and everybody Watch. Um, first off, I apologize if my appearance and demeanor seem a bit uh, lackluster today um, I'm filming this on a Sunday and on the Friday afternoon I got my second uh, vaccine shot and it's just really kicking my butt um, basically just feel like I have the flu and um, you know I didn't even think I was gonna get the film but I'm really trying uh, trying to do this for you guys uh, and because I enjoy it you know maybe it'll put me in a better mood prepare me for the work week so um, I'm here today with another book review times two. This one uh, I was really excited about doing. Um, this is a review for Sweet Dreams and Best Friends. Um, as you all know, Sweet Dreams I got in a large haul a while back and Best Friends was sent to me by Juan from Plagued by Visions uh, because he thought that the covers uh, meshed together very well, which they do. Um, and so I was really excited to do a comparison of the two since it's clearly the same, uh, same artist for these two. Um, and aside from that, this was my first William H. Johnstone book and my first Ruby Jean Jensen book, so I was doubly excited. Uh, I'd like to start with the William Johnstone Sweet Dreams. Excellent cover. Um, unfortunately, I'm sad to say that uh, the cover, I think, is probably the best part of this book. Um, so, Sweet Dreams. I'll just read you the back synopsis here. It says, Light. It can only be seen in the dead of night. The satanic glow swirled above the old railroad tracks, pulsating with evil, flickering with the light of hell itself. And it drew the young people of good hope to its shimmering core like moths to a flame. Dark. The eerie change in the slumbering Missouri town could only be seen by one child. Innocent ten-year-old Heather sensed the chill of darkness in her schoolmates' vacant stares, the evil festering in their hearts. But no one listened to her terrified screams. No one believed the nightmare was true. And now it was Heather's turn to feed the hungry spirit with her very soul. Sweet dreams. So, to a point, that little synopsis on the back, um, I think, does a decent job of explaining to you what's going to happen, but only about half of it is true. So this book is kind of the literary equivalent of reading Troll 2, that uh, that in infamous horror movie that a lot of you know about uh, that's just so bad uh, that it kind of has a cold following, you know? And I feel like Sweet Dreams does that exact same thing. And everything about this book screams schlocky, B-movie, low-budget horror. And, um, and, you know, from the atrocious dialogue to the fact that the two main characters, again, are, you know, 10, 11 years old, but uh, because they are, because they have high IQs, um, they speak in a manner that uh, honestly doesn't even befit your average adult. Which I think is really just William Johnstone's excuse for not being able to write um, a child character. In which case I have to wonder why you made two children the star of the show in this case. But, oh well. Um, so, aside from the horrible, horrible dialogue, um, there's just not much about this book that is in any way believable, realistic, and uh, to the point where it just makes it hard to get into whatsoever, you know? And I get it, it's horror, a lot of it is cheesy and ridiculous, and a lot of it, you know, is just completely impossible. But part of the fun of horror is that we can still put ourselves in that place and say, well, you know, it's not impossible, it's just very, 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 very unlikely. But I could potentially end up in this situation. Well, in Sweet Dreams, 
it's just not the case. Um, every adult character is an idiot. The only two people who have any sense to them uh, are the two kids. But that's not even true because, you know, they're supposed to have these super high IQs. Um, and then they'll just say or do something that's so totally stupid that you wonder if they're, you know, five or six instead of ten. Um, and especially a ten-year-old with a 170 IQ. Let me share with you some of the ridiculousness that is this book. Um, one of the main adult characters is a doctor. Um, he is the town doctor, okay? Uh, well, his wife is brutally murdered by this thing that's killing people. And along with the medical examiner from a few uh, towns over, you know, they go over the body of his wife. Well, so this doctor has to have the med medical examiner tell him the brain was totally destroyed, completely. Almost as if it had been picked clean and then destroyed. After that was done, or perhaps during or before, her blood was drained and then every vital organ was destroyed. So, this doctor of 35 years does not recognize during the medical examination that, hey, isn't it interesting that none of my wife's organs are still there and that there's not a drop of blood in her and that, uh, that little thing in the brain pan up there is all mushy and all over the place. Uh, so I found that weird. Um, like I said, the characterization all around was just awful. Um, every woman was uh, just either a sexual deviant uh, or an absolute nightmare of a person. Um, characterization sucked. Uh, the you know, the violence was just awful, awful, absolutely awful. Um, what did make it entertaining for me is that in my particular copy, whoever had this book before helpfully uh, highlighted every instance of, uh, of cursing or uh, anything to do with sex or anything to do with extreme violence. And um, so... so for instance, you have almost entire pages uh, where the text has been, you know, highlighted and it is just all throughout the book. Why, I don't know, but uh, it made this book slightly more entertaining for me. But, um, to kind of get to the point, if you want to read some truly awful, low-budget, schlocky horror, then this book might be for you. Um, that said, it is 400 pages, and um, it's gonna take you a while to get through because you're gonna have to keep stopping and rolling your eyes and saying, you know, gosh dang it, can it get any worse? Well, it probably will. Um, all that aside, I think, uh, I, I just can't believe that William Johnstone wrote this thinking it was a good book. There is no way that he wrote this trying to take himself seriously. Um, it is very much a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing. He knew it was terrible. He knew it. Uh, so I give it two stars because I think that for the right person, this could still be an entertaining read. For me, however, it was just ridiculous. I got some laughs out of it, but uh, that's about it. Um, then... I moved on to Best Friends from Ruby Jean Jensen. And like I said, this was also my first Ruby Jean Jensen, so I was really excited about that. Uh, this book was much, much, much better than Sweet Dreams. Once again, I'm going to read you the uh, little synopsis on the back. Teacher's Pet. It was a stroke of luck. The bizarre death of Miss Beatrice shortly before her trial meant that three-year-old Barry would not be forced to take the stand. You might say she had gotten her own <clears throat> you might say she had only gotten her just desserts, and as anyone could see, looking into his serene blue eyes, Barry would soon forget. Devil's Child. Miss Beatrice had frightened him, but now Barry wasn't afraid, would never be afraid again. For he had friends that no one else could see. Friends who played with him and kept him safe. 
Friends who did anything he wanted. It was such fun to watch them play Ring Around the Rosie with grown-ups, especially when they all fell down dead. Best friends. So, this book. Uh, this book deals with some heavy material in that uh, the star of the show is Barry, this three-year-old boy. His father had been sending him to a daycare. Well, the book starts off with a bang when, um, one, the woman who runs the daycare is slaughtered, and two, Barry's father finds out that she was about to go on trial because um, somehow it leaked that at this daycare she was doing awful, awful things to the children. Um, now, we don't necessarily get into everything that happened, uh, Barry gives us some glimpses, and I will say for any of you who are concerned uh, that it has nothing to do with uh, molestation or anything like that, uh, it is nothing sexual towards these children. It's more of an occult ritual kind of thing, but uh, we get some of that from Barry. Um, the book itself, though, is, uh, is, is just very well written. Um, I can see now why people collect these Ruby Jean Jensen novels, why her books are so highly sought after. Not only do they all have killer covers, um, but she was genuinely a really good writer. And um, so like I said, Best Friends starts off that way, where we find out all this at one time about uh, Barry and what he's been through. So now he is incredibly mistrustful of women. Um, he can't stand to be touched by women. Um, if they talk to him, then he just kind of cringes and, you know, uh, goes inside himself a little. And um, so <clears throat> the doctor who checks him out suggests to Barry's father, uh, suggests that they go away for a while, that they get away from home for a while. And they have this lovely cabin um, upstate, but, uh, you know, Barry's father has to work. So he suggests this woman that used to be his patient. Uh, she'd been through some pretty terrible things, lost her family in a bad accident, and he thinks it would be good both for Barry and for this woman. Um, so she is hired to take the whole family to the cabin and stay there for the entirety of the summer. Um, now throughout this, we learn of Barry's best friends, um, a boy named Reed, who is really just an older, much stronger, scarier, meaner version of Barry, uh, as well as this weird conglomeration here of uh, animals that is called Juno. And uh, that's another thing that was really exciting to me is that this cover, um, you know, sometimes these crazy covers, they don't actually occur in the book. Well, in this case, you were introduced right away to these two, to Reed and Juno. And um, so that was really exciting for me because the whole time I had a very clear mental picture of these two and uh, it just, it added, it added to the whole story for me. But uh, so Reed and Juno have a very protective nature and uh, so anything that they perceive as a threat towards Barry uh, needs to be taken care of and will be taken care of usually in a very brutal fashion. Um, the problem being that uh, slowly, more and more, it seems as though Barry no longer has control of these two. Um, and so that's where the horror kind of ramps up. So this book does a lot very well. Like I said, the writing is stellar. The characterization is great. Um, I thought that uh, the character of Barry has you know, as as an abused child um, was was excellent. You know, um, like I said, any time a woman tries to talk to him or get near him, uh, he, he panics. Um, when the woman who's taking care of them tries to hold his hand, he freaks out and starts screaming and goes running out the door and they have to catch him. You know, it was just, um, I thought it was a very realistic portrayal of how a child would react in this case. And, uh, I mean, was it hard to read? Absolutely. But, um, but it was, it was compelling in that manner. Um, like I said, much in the way that I complained that Sweet Dreams did not at all feel real, uh, Best Friends 
felt very real and felt like something that could maybe in that tiny little space that's you know in the back of our, our, our heads as horror fans maybe it could happen and maybe this awful terrible thing you know might truly happen and so it just worked I mean it, it did it just worked the book from start to finish was excellent I loved every moment of it uh, so at the end of the day Sweet Dreams ended up with two stars and Best Friends ended up with five stars. Uh, easily one of my favorites right now. I will definitely be on the search for more Ruby Jean Jensen in the future. William Johnstone, I know I have another one of his books in there somewhere from this same collection. Um, I think it's a book called They or something. They, Them, something like that. Anyway, I will give him another shot, but uh, I truly hope it was better than this one. Ruby Jean Jensen, Maybe I'll get lucky and find something else from her. But there you go, guys. Two stars, five stars. Um, as always, I thank you for joining me. Um, I apologize if this one was, uh, like I said, a little all over the place. Um, I know my voice isn't as strong today. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm really feeling it from this thing. And I'm hoping that I can beat it by tomorrow and get back to work. So thank you. Have an awesome day. Have a great week. Um, stay strong. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys again soon. I've got some uh, I've got some cool videos coming your way. I just have to gain a little strength back before I uh, before I get into the filming. So I'll see you all. Have a great great day. Cheers.